Oh, seriously? Hey, hey guys, and welcome to another video with myself, Six Plus Stevo. So, if you've been living under a rock for the last couple of months, you will not be aware that Gazzy is getting a new miniature any day now. It's coming up really soon, and it's looking rather impressive. And uh, if you're anything like me, you've all been eagerly awaiting any news and tidbits of information, like what are his stats going to be, to get a proper look at the miniature. We did get that sort of uh, sneak peek look at him a little while ago. Um, and we have seen a fair bit of the miniature, and he's looking rather impressive. But uh, yeah, to get a proper proper look at the miniature and, and the kit itself and how it's going to be whether it's going to be multi-pose and whatever um and the price and everything else that we we're just desperate for information on um so yeah i don't have any more news for you on that front and uh so failing that i thought it'd be rather fun to take a look back at gasgol through the ages because he's had a few miniatures now um including the one you're seeing on screen now our current edition of him um, and uh, yeah, just to take a look back, just for nothing more than a bit of nostalgia really, and uh, to introduce some of you younger players out there who may not have seen some of these miniatures, because he's had a few different versions over the years, and uh, it's quite interesting to see how he's evolved, not just as a character, um, but as a miniature, and um, to see that sort of evolution as he's grown and he's you know become a staple part of the the whole orc faction and our our biggest character and uh, for good reason because he's he's a rather cool dude um so yeah what you're seeing on screen now is the miniature that we all know and love our current version of Gasgol um and uh yeah he's been around for quite a while now but what a lot of you younger people may not realize or know about is that this version of Gaskell, which a lot of the older viewers will be familiar with him. And uh, this was his second edition version, complete with Makari, um, who, amazing, is making a comeback, which is so cool. Um, I, I didn't think we'd ever see that. And it's it's awesome to see him. So for any of you that don't haven't seen him before, there is his original version of Makari. And uh, it's still a cool looking little miniature. It brings back so much nostalgia. His little face on him. Um, I, I've got a soft spot for those old school style grots. Their little grinning faces. Um, very cool indeed. But before we get in, take a closer look at these two miniatures. Um, something that a lot of people may not be aware of that is far less well known is that there was a version of Gaskol before this. And here he is. Yes. Um, now look at this. This is... So this this is um, Gaskol Thracker. Um, you can tell by the banner pole, that which hasn't changed over the years. That's it's still his classic symbol there. Um, it looks like he's stood on a load of beaky helmets there. Um, very cool indeed. He's got all the multicoloured ones. They're like, uh, like jelly beans down there. But yeah, really look, really cool miniature actually, really cool. And um, I think it's amazing how some of these early Rogue Trader miniatures have aged so well. Um, I mean, you can clearly see from the painting style and stuff that you know it's it's a sort of product of its time. But that doesn't take anything away from it. He's a he's still even at this early stage in his career. He looked like an evil badass who was destined for greatness. Um, he's got his skull trophies, just like every Games Workshop miniature has to have some skulls on them somewhere. It's just part and parcel of it. He's got his um, weapon arm there, which looks very similar to my uh, Big Mech, actually. Uh, my converted Big Mech that I did, who's got his sort of Mega Man style gun sort of strapped on to the arm. Or whether it's even like a, his arm's been lopped off and been replaced by, by a Mech Boy or something. Um, he's holding his chain sword there. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. But this, this miniature um, wasn't actually um, available as Gasgol. This was actually a conversion by none other than Andy Chambers himself. Um, and this first appeared in White Dwarf 
one three five way way back um and i this is usually the point where i say oh, this makes me feel old but actually i i wasn't um this was kind of before my time because like i say this is this is pre second edition and second edition was really where i just sort of dipped my toe and you know my first version of the game that i owned um but i was too young to be able to master playing it um but yeah so this was before my time even um but i love this artwork on this old issue of white dwarf um i've got to pick up some of these old copies of white dwarf actually i'd like to do some videos on some of these because damn the hours i used to waste reading these magazines well not waste it was time well spent let's be honest it was time well spent but yeah that's uh that's a cool cool front cover that it looks just badass but we're not here to talk about old copies of white dwarf i just thought that was interesting to show you that anyway um and like i say although technically speaking yes it wasn't a first miniature of gaskol released um but it just shows that how far he goes back he does he does date right back to rogue trader actually and i think even some of the older players and um, veterans may not be aware of that so i thought that was interesting to show but yeah really really cool little conversion shows his really early sort of prototype gaskol if you will and it, it's cool because it kind of ties into his law um, in how it goes right back to when he was just a humble boy and uh, was shot in the head by a um, dirty Umi space marine. Um, but good old Grotznik patched him up and then, you know, that set off a whole series of events that the Imperium are still suffering for now. Um, so, yeah, it's quite cool to sort of, it's kind of like looking at him in his boy incarnation there. But then, of course, we move up to this, the edition that a lot of veterans will be familiar with, good old Genghis Khan Gazgul, um, the second edition sculpt of him, which is, again, very, very cool. Um, this is when he had his gun, uh, Blaster X, I believe it was called, um, which I've got a feeling he may be going back because he kind of had a bit of a downgrade on that. Um, in later editions, he came with just a twin big shooter, which isn't, it's not too shabby by any stretch of the imagination. But um, just having a twin big shooter or having your own customised snazzy Blaster X gun, I think it'd be better if he has a decent sort of specialised um, shiny gubbins weapon um, when they bring him out. And I think from the, the sort of, some of the shots we've seen in that, I think... There's indication that he may have a sort of a better souped up gun now, which would be very cool. He's still at this point holding his, um, not a chain sword anymore, but a power sword. Because, uh, yep, back then orcs could have things like power swords and bolters, can you believe? Um, and plasma guns and anything else that pretty much the Umi's had access to. And there's good old Makari there with the banners. Um, I, I love these banners. Um, I love them. And you can see, like I say, the... The initial concept of the banner hasn't changed since Andy Chambers' sort of first conversion of Gazgol. There it is there. Um, it's tweaked. It's polished up a little bit. He's still standing on top of his uh, Space Marine skulls, um, helmets even. Um, they don't look quite so much like jelly beans now, but he's still got the variety of colours there. He's, he's got some Imperial Fists, some Dark Angels, Blood Angels there. Um, so yeah, he's got the little beakies there, but yeah, he's still got that same banner, um, and, um, Makari's waving his goth banner around and they look very cool. Um, again, the banners are a product of their time. I don't think they would look good on miniatures now, but there's just a certain nostalgic charm to them. There's sort of little hand drawn bits that just really, really cool. Um, but yeah, Genghis Khan, like I say, he's just got that look about him, hasn't he? Um, dripping with skulls so many skulls on him um and he just looks badass and he he looks quite happy this is um probably the happiest we've ever seen gasco he's got a good old grin on his face there big toothy grin he's got a lot to be happy about he's obviously kicking in some umi teeth leading some wires having a right good time of it i think he's become a bit more bad tempered over the years since this incarnation of him but yeah, this, this incarnation, 19, um, 1992, came out with the second edition codex, um, which is an awesome codex. If you, if you want a good book of sort of uh, orc lore and just to see some classic forgotten um, 
orc miniatures get this codex you can pick it up fairly cheap it's i wouldn't say it's common but it, there's there's still quite a few of them going around on ebay and you can get them at a pretty good price and it's it's a good book this is for looking back at sort of what orcs used to be um because their law and stuff changed quite a bit since then but there you go there's gazzy on the front cover prominent and i don't know it's really cool that he's in like the mega armor and stuff now and bulked out and bigger but there's something about that sort of Genghis Khan style, the, the helmet with the fur, and the he's just got quite a cool look to him. And there, there's something to say for that look. Um, not that I'd say to go back to that because it's great that he's bulked out with all the you know stupid oversized armor and that. That's that is really cool. But there's just a nostalgic charm to this one. Um, and he was around for quite a while. This sculpt of Gazi. He was he was around. Um, right up into the early days of the third edition codex and it wasn't until a little bit later that we got this the miniature that we all know and love and uh, he's been around for a long time now this this miniature is now almost 20 years old um, but to be honest with you it doesn't really show now I've talked about Gazkol before how we desperately need a new sculpt and everything and that's not in any way because there's anything wrong with this miniature it's more because of like other factions where we've had things like um primarchs and things coming back and we've you know we've got some like you know big sculpts of there's big demon primarchs going around there's gilliman running around uh, there's lots of primaris there's 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 a whole host of really big nasty hqs out there and our biggest nastiest hq isn't actually that big um in sense of scale with them when he came out he was a big bad you know big bad on the tabletop um and he would scare people and he still does to a certain degree he's still quite nasty on the tabletop um but this this miniature is great it is awesome he looks absolutely brutal i love the look on his face he looks like he is in full charge mode he is there's you can see on his face there's no reasoning with this guy He's, there's, he has no remorse, no pity. Um, he's 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 not going to go easy on you. He is going to stomp you into the dirt, and uh, everyone's scared of him, including all his own orcs. They're, everyone's terrified of him. There is no messing with Gaskell. He is the biggest and the baddest. And uh, yeah, there's just the, I love the banner top with the big the big skull, um, the sort of pose that he's got where you can see he's striding forward you know he, he is purposeful there's, there's there's a really it's just an awesome sculpt and an awesome miniature and you can see why it's lasted 20 years um but yeah it, it, it is definitely time it he's he's just been a little too long in the tooth now and uh, just not quite the scale that we require and this this was originally a metal miniature as well and um you can see the sort of size and scale of him he he is big and sturdy and bulky and uh if you if you throw one of these across the table and hit someone in the head you're gonna need to be calling for an ambulance because yeah that's gonna suffer some heavy concussion because this this boy is big you don't want to drop him on your feet if you've got no shoes on um but yeah, he's awesome. That oversized power claw is just awesome. The big shooter on there looks great. I love all the cabling and stuff. I think Mega Knobs are great miniatures anyway. Um, but it's, a, it's another reason because the, the current Mega Knobs that we have out are, are fantastic. Um, but they actually make Gazzy seem quite small because without the banner top and stuff, he's kind of a little bit smaller than them um, in some respects anyway in terms of height. Um, so yeah, he, he desperately does need an update and we're getting it. We're getting it and happy days cause it's looking good. Uh, but yeah, he came out, um, like I say, he didn't, he didn't, I originally I'm trying to, I was trying to remember back. I had to message Skarna before recording this video and just say, buddy, can you help me out? I'm looking online, trying to find the release date and stuff. And I couldn't remember exactly when he came out. I originally thought he came out with the third edition codex, but he didn't actually, he's not even featured he is, but his miniature, that miniature, isn't actually featured in the Third Ed Codex. Because um, he came out a, a year later in this Codex Armageddon. Um, 
which is an awesome, awesome codex, all about the war for Armageddon. And this came out with some special rules and you know extra things in there. And it was it was it was an awesome codex. It really is like a supplemental codex of the uh, Armageddon campaign. Very famous. And uh, this was the big reveal of Gazi. And uh, yeah, there he is. There it looks like it's basically him and Commissar Yarrick. There, they both kind of look a bit different, but I believe that is them. Um, they've kind of got his arm, Gazzy's arms, the wrong way round. It's sort of mirrored and stuff. But uh, yeah, um, so yeah, his old rival, old Commissar Yarrick. There, but yeah, that's a great, um, a great book which I need to pick up again, um, and to go along with part of my. Um, codex retrospectives playlist i'll pop a link up to that actually if you if you like your nostalgia and you like your look back i'll do a series of videos looking back for all the old codexes um, i've done a fair few of them now i've still got more to do including this one um, so that is on my list of things i need to get and do a video on so keep an eye out for that um, but yeah so then we come up to this 20 years later here we are and by God, it's just, oh, <laughs> every time I see any of these images or watch the video back of the sneak reveal of Gaz, I just, I'm just blown away. Um, he he just looks immense. That claw, that claw just looks sublime. Um, and you can just see the scale of it. This is a human skull right here. That's a human skull. That's the claw. The claw is literally the size of a primary space marine. He is going to be fucking mahoosive. We are talking death dread sized. I really think we are. And uh, yeah, I mean, Gazzy himself is not exactly small. He's, he's, he's big. He is big. Um, but he's bulked out even further by these ridiculously oversized ar mega armor and his claws and his weapons and his trophy racks and everything. And he's just going to be such an imposing thing on the battlefield. And I I mean, I for one, I can't wait to get my hands on this miniature. And I'm not a goth player. Um, he's, you know, I and I don't usually do special characters very much, but it's Gazgol. Can you really call yourself a true orc player if you don't have Gazzy in your collection? He's the big bad. He's the big boss. You've got to have him. Um, and he's he just he just looks like he's going to be such a joy to build and paint, and to play on the tabletop and just see what he's capable of. Something really big and scary, and I can't see many. I can't see many miniatures being able to go toe to toe with him. I really can't. Um, in terms of sheer just straight up combat capabilities, um, yeah, that's if GW get it right with his stats and his rules. Because GW, you better be bringing us something really good with these rules. He needs to be. I don't care if he's expensive on points. You know, if you've got to pay the points to get him, that's fine. But he has got to be terrifying he's got to be something that people just do not want to get into toe-to-toe -to -toe combat with unless they've got someone that's you know equally tough we've yeah i want him to be on par with the primarchs in terms of sheer combat capabilities <clears throat> but yeah there we go guys a little nostalgic look back for you anyway um as we build up the hype wagon to this new miniature coming out i thought it was good just to take a look back at the evolution of the Gazi miniature, we had that initial one by Andy Chambers, the the Rogue Trader edition of Gazi. Um, we then got the proper release of the second edition Gazi, complete with Makari, um, and then the one that we all know and love that we've still got at the moment, the third edition one, which has gone through third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth edition. Um, he's got to be one of the oldest miniatures GW are still producing. Um, but to be honest, he's still one of the best. Still one of the best. But he is about to be surpassed big time. Big time. But anyway, guys, um, share your thoughts below. Um, and share your comments below. Do you have any of these old miniatures? Um, and do you still use them? And uh, which one of Gazzy's incarnations is your favourite? I'd love to know in the comment section below, guys. But in the meantime, hit a like. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. And for now, guys, this is 6 Plus Stevo, signing out.